So let's suppose that we are given the following two products that each contain a carbon-carbon double bond and we are asked to devise a reaction mechanism that produces these two products. Now, generally speaking, whenever you see the production of a carbon-carbon double bond, one of the reaction mechanisms that should come to mind is the reaction mechanism for the aldol condensation. Remember, the aldol condensation followed by a dehydration reaction produces a double bond between the alpha and the beta carbon, so it produces essentially our alkene. So let's suppose we want to begin with molecule number one. So we somehow want to react some type of reactants together in a certain way to produce our product as shown here. So let's follow our aldol condensation followed by the dehydration reaction mechanism. So basically this side of the molecule seems as if it's going to act as our carbonyl nucleophile attaching to this molecule which is our simple aldehyde. So let's begin by producing that nucleophilic anion. So basically we have this molecule here that contains two H's. So this is very similar to the Covenangle condensation reaction that we spoke about in the previous lecture. So we have, here we have our H, here we have our H, to this side we have our COOCH3, and here we have the COOCH3. So these groups are basically the groups that will play a role to stabilize the conjugate base, the anion, that is formed when some type of base reacts and grabs this H away from our carbon. Now this carbon is our alpha carbon because these are our two carbonyl groups. So this will be an acidic or these two H's will be acidic and that means our base will have no problem deprotonating this H and our two lone pair of electrons or our lone pair of electrons will end up on this carbon and those two electrons will be resonance stabilized by these two groups here. So we have our anion that is formed, so we have our two electrons here, our H here, over here we have our COOCH3, here we have the COOCH3, we have a negative charge on this carbon, and of course this is resonance stabilized, but we're not going to really worry about drawing all the resonance stabilized forms. And of course we also produce our conjugate acid to this base here. Now this base could be any strong base, let's suppose it's some type of amine. Now in the next step, we have to add our simple aldehyde. What aldehyde? Well basically this aldehyde here. So we have our carbon double bond to the oxygen. On one side we have the H, on the other side we have our phenyl group. So this is basically an aldehyde and the reaction mechanism seems as if it's exactly like the reaction mechanism of the Covenangle condensation reaction. Now, in step number two, so let's suppose this is step number two, we have these lone pair of electrons will act as a nucleophile attacking this carbon position, displacing our pi bond, placing the two electrons onto this oxygen over here. So we have our six electrons here, so we have a negative charge on this oxygen. We have a carbon here, an H group, a phenyl group, and of course we have a bond between this carbon and this carbon here. We have our last acidic alpha hydrogen, and we have our two groups here, the carbonyl groups or carbonyl groups. Okay, so this is step number, let's label this as step number one. This is step number two. Now in step number three, we have to form our, form our aldol. And to form the aldol, all that we have to do is the BH that we form in step one basically acts with, uh, with this side here, with this oxygen. This oxygen takes away this H, deprotonates this acid, while this acid protonates this oxygen. And so we form, 
we reform the initial base and we form our aldol product. So this is our aldol product. We have our C, we have our OH, we have our H, we have our phenyl group, we have this C, the H, and our two groups here. Okay, so this is basically our aldol. So this is the alpha carbon, this is the beta carbon, and to the beta carbon we have the hydroxy group attached. We also, of course, form our base. So here's our base that has our negative charge. Now, if we are under the right conditions, for example, a high temperature, this will continue onward to form our alpha beta unsaturated product. And because that's exactly what we want, let's continue. So in the next step, we have this base acts as a base, uh, grabbing away the last alpha hydrogen um, off of this carbon here and placing our two electrons onto that alpha carbon and we produce the following product. We have our two electrons here, our two groups here, we have our phenol, our H, we have our hydroxy group and we have our COOCH3 and COOCH3. Now this has a negative charge and the final step is basically the um, these two electrons will act as essentially a nucleophile creating a pi bond between these two carbons, the alpha carbon and the beta carbon, and that will kick off this group here, our hydroxy group. And so the final product that is formed will be this product here. So this is our alpha carbon. So this is our alpha carbon. This is our beta carbon. Here's our beta carbon, so the alpha, the beta, and this is our alpha beta unsaturated product. So this is basically the reaction mechanism to the formation of product number one. What about product number two? How can we form product number two? Well, basically the reaction mechanism to this formation is exactly the same as in this case, except instead of using this diketone nucleophile, we use a different molecule that isn't exactly a carbonyl group as our nucleophile. So this is the coven angle condensation, but this is not the coven angle condensation, although it still is an aldol condensation. So basically one of the groups should be a key Ketone, this is our ketone, and the other group should be this molecule here that basically will act as our nucleophile. So in step number one, we basically begin with, with uh, this, uh, this type of molecule as shown here. So we have our carbon, we have our H, we have our H, and we have our five-membered ring with our two conjugated double bonds. And so in the first step, we have a base that takes, uh, that uses its lone pair of electrons to take away this H, placing our two electrons onto this carbon, and we form a resonance stabilized anion. And this will be very good uh, because when we have a resonance stabilized anion, that will make a very good nucleophile. So we have our, okay, so we have this molecule that acts as a pretty good nucleophile. Uh, now if we mix this with our carbonyl molecule, so in this case it's this ketone here, so we have, um, so we have one, Two. So we have one, two on each side. So now this acts as a nucleophile. We also, of course, produce our BH. So let's put the BH on the bottom here, our conjugate acid to this base. Um, these electrons basically attack this carbon here, displacing uh, our two electrons in the pi bond onto the oxygen. And that basically forms our structure that is analogous to this structure here. So this is step one, this is step two. Um, so we have um, these 
then we have the bond between this carbon and this carbon, and then we have our... Okay, now this carbon, of course, has one more H attached to it. So in a way, it has one more acidic H atom. Now in the next step, we have the protonation of this oxygen by using this BH here. So we have the BH and this BH, our acid, acts to protonate this. So our uh, two electrons act as a base forming our conjugate base of this acid as well as our aldol molecule. So the next step is the formation of the aldol-like looking molecule. So we have these and our OH. Now in the next two steps, we have analogous steps as here. We have the dehydration taking place. So basically this OH has to be kicked off. And the way that the OH is kicked off is a base comes in, the base that we created here, and grabs the final acidic H off of this carbon, producing this molecule, essentially an anion, so this one has two electrons now. And of course, we have resin stabilization taking place here. And that will be a stabilizing thing. And in a final step, this has a negative charge. This forms a pi bond between this, the, uh, these two carbons, kicking off our hydroxy group. And in a final step, we form the molecule that we wanted to form in the first place. So we form... our two pi bonds, this molecule here, and of course, under the proper conditions, namely high temperatures, we reform our hydroxide molecule here. So we can see that in step number one, or in product number one, this, this is a product of a Covenangle condensation reaction in which some type of diketone, our nucleophile, basically reacts with the simple aldehyde to form our product. And in a second type of product, this product although it's not exactly a Covenangle condensation because we do not begin with a, uh, a carbonyl group, it is a Covenangle-like condensation uh, reaction in which we begin with a nucleophile. Well, we begin with a molecule that is a good uh, Lewis acid that produces a anion, the nucleophile, which reacts with our ketone. Eventually, we produce this final product via a uh, uh, aldol condensation followed by a dehydration reaction.